Oregon's death with dignity law has been around for more than a quarter of a century. So how did we get here? In the 1980s and 90s, Oregon State Senator Frank Roberts introduced a number of physician-assisted dying bills. He was suffering from prostate cancer at the time and eventually died from it in 1993, while his wife, Barbara Roberts, was governor of Oregon. That same year, a group of lawyers and healthcare workers created the Oregon Right to Die Political Action Committee. They wrote the Death with Dignity Act and got it on the ballot in 1994, and voters passed it by a slim margin. But the group National Right to Life challenged it in court, and a judge put a hold on the law from actually taking effect. A few years later, in 1997, Oregon lawmakers put another measure on the ballot, this time trying to repeal the act. But voters rejected it, and the law finally went into effect, this time with even more support from the public. In the mid-2000s, it was challenged again, this time by the Bush administration, but the U.S. Supreme Court upheld the law. Then in 2008, Washington became the second state in the country to pass a Death with Dignity Act, and other states have followed since. Recently, Oregon lawmakers have even tried to expand the bill, like changing the requirement that patients have six months or less to live, but those proposals have failed. Last year, Governor Kate Brown signed off on getting rid of a 15-day waiting period for medication for patients who have less than two weeks to live. Since Oregon's law took effect, more than 1,500 patients have been prescribed medication to end their lives. And that's how we got here.